I asked you guys to submit your hottest Dead by Daylight takes, and I'm going to be reacting to them today. RPD is a completely fine map. It's not as bad as everyone thinks it is, and it can actually be really good if you know your way around it. I completely disagree. It goes against every single thing that makes a map good, besides aesthetics. Aesthetics, it's an amazing map. They, they nailed it, like completely nailed it. Think of literally any single bad map in the history of DBD. Old Haddonfield with the fences and the hedges where you couldn't get to where you wanted to go quickly. This map has a ton of that with the multiple floors and the really long walls. Size. Everybody complains about the size of Swamp and Mother's Dwelling. RPD is massive, plus it's multiple floors. It may not feel massive, but it's multiple floors and an inside and an outside, so it is very big. Not knowing where things are is also a huge thing, but it's not necessarily because people don't know the rooms. It's just like solo queue survivors have no idea where other teammates are or where gens are sometimes. All of the pallets are either unsafe or god pallets, so there's no interactivity there. There's only like one window on the map that's actually interactive and that you could play around. It's just a boring map overall. There's just nothing. There's just no variety with it, essentially. An average nurse is actually really fun to face. One of the most fun killers in the game. I don't think this is a hot take. I think anybody enjoys playing against a nurse that's not that good. You have to think about it. Like an average nurse isn't good because you're either a bad nurse or a good nurse. There's like no in between. So I would say, I would say, I don't think this is a hot take. I'm pretty sure anybody that knows how to play against the nurse likes going against an average nurse. Life is the best exhaustion perk. That is just absolutely not true. I think life Life is basically just an easier version of Sprint Burst, but I think Sprint Burst can just help you in so many more ways than Life can. It's just significantly harder to use. Although Life is still very, very strong. And Ace is the best character. That is just wrong. Circle of Healing is still very strong as long as everyone knows what they're doing. I don't really know because I haven't played with Circle of Healing much, but it's just like, why bother bringing that instead of bringing just like other healing builds and other healing perks, you know? Most good players don't even heal most of the match because why would you when you can just do gens, you know? So it's just, it can be, I'm sure it can be good if you're on a coordinated team, but you have to be really, really high level and really know your callouts and stuff to be able to use it properly. The twins are really fun to play as and against, and deception is an underrated perk. Therefore, Binding of Kin was a great chapter. No, the game is in a healthier state than ever before. Now this, this is a hot take because I agree with it, but I don't agree with the term healthier. I think it's in the most balanced state that it's ever been, which I think actually makes the game worse overall. This is my hot take. Okay. Dead by Daylight is a party game. It is not competitively viable. It was not designed to be competitively viable. The fundamentals of the game itself are not competitive, which is why when you try to balance it so that it is competitive, it's so boring and stale and has no life or soul in the game. Like there's so much that you can do in this game, but it all feels the same. It's, it's really hard to explain. Onryo is underrated even without the condemned build and also a super fun killer to play as and against. It depends on what you mean by underrated. From a fun perspective, that's subjective, but from a power perspective, she's just an M1 killer that can teleport around the map. From an objective standpoint, I can't see how she's better than like Wraith or like Blight. You know what I mean? I mean, obviously Blight's a bit of a stretch, but just for the traversability wise, her teleporting is decent, but you can do that much better with a lot of other killers. And then her stealth ability is just a worse version of Wraith. So I don't know. I don't think she's underrated. I think people understand that she's like one of the weakest killers in the game. Old Dead Hard, the one that gave you distance was a lot healthier to the game. This is hard because I didn't have a problem with Old Dead Hard as a killer man. I do think the new Dead Hard was healthier to the game overall, but I do think the old Dead Hard was significantly more fun because you can actually make cool plays with it. They should just remove the iframes instead of reworking it to what it is now. No, the entire problem with old Dead Hard was Dead Harding for distance because that was completely uncounterable. The iframes, like it was pretty easy to get around that. The only reason the iframes were annoying is if you're playing killers like Huntress or like Blight or Nurse. But like, to be fair, you don't like, who cares? Those killers are strong anyway. You have to tunnel at least one person as the killer to win. This is just objectively wrong. Like I don't tunnel in 95% of my matches and I still win a majority of them. So this is just wrong. Hag is not an unfun killer to go against. It's just that most people don't know how to play her or how to play against her. If you properly set up webs of traps, it's extremely satisfying to get hits. And on the survivor end of things, Hag makes you think about stuff that you normally wouldn't think about, which in my opinion makes her extremely fun. Definitely better than Merchant and Knight. I completely agree with this. I hate that the majority of people do not like playing against Hag or like playing as her. She is a very, very fun killer to play against because there's so much interactivity that can happen in chase. Like, just watch this chase on screen. The amount of things that both the killer and I are thinking in our heads, it's like you have to think about so much. And I just love that part of chases when you have to do so many different mind games. Like in this chase specifically, I thought more than two steps ahead of what the Hag would think about doing. And just that act of mind gaming, 
the killer and thinking multiple steps ahead and thinking about what they're probably thinking about is so fun to me. And I don't know. I, I just, I really like hags, but I understand why people don't because a lot of hags, you know, camp or whatever. Devour hope should get reworked. Whenever I use it as killer, it almost always either gets cleansed before I get three tokens or I single-handedly get a 4k because of it, which I don't think is a good design concept for a perk. I don't necessarily think this is a good argument because the entire point of hex perks is that you either get nothing out of it or you get a ton of value out of it. So I would have to disagree. With mid-level add-ons, a flashlight is the most useful item in the game. This is just wrong. Like this is just straight up wrong. Flashlights are probably one of the worst items in the game. Like they are not as good as people think they are. They're so easy to counter and they don't really do much if you know how to counter them. Like th this is probably a bait post, but med kits, toolboxes, even maps and keys are more useful than flashlights. But flashlights are just like significantly more fun. So that's why everybody runs them. I like playing against tryhard survivors as a killer and vice versa because the gratification of beating sweaty survivors is always better than the molding of losing to them. I, okay, I would have to agree to a certain extent. I like every once in a while going up against a really, really good killer or a really, really good survivor. It's just when it gets to the point where every single game is the same thing and it's always either tryhard survivors or tryhard killers, it gets very repetitive and it gets very boring, which is why I'm glad that the MMR system is so unbelievably bad in this game that this doesn't happen that often. But it is, of course, it is satisfying to beat sweaty survivors. But if the sweaty survivor or the sweaty killer is just playing in a really cringe way, like just not picking anybody up from the ground and just like slugging everybody the entire game, that's not fun. Like that is not, I don't get satisfaction for beating them in that game. Like to me, it's just like, why are you even doing this? Like, obviously you could do whatever you want because it's a video game, but just why? Like it's so, it's so dumb. I don't know. Clown can be very good if you have skill with him. I would have to actually agree with this. The only problem is that if survivors are good and they pre-drop pallets and they don't let you get your hits because they pre-drop your pallets, Clown sucks. But I actually don't think he's as bad as people say. I do think he has a lot of potential, especially on very open maps that have like not that many pallets. Definitely going to get flamed for this one, but I like the Skull Merchant both going against and playing as. I am so sorry for your loss. Post-game chat should be completely deleted because of the amount of toxicity plus half the words are censored for some reason. I wouldn't mind this, but I would rather keep the post-game chat on. And if you are annoyed by toxicity, just turn it off. You can literally click a button to turn it off if you don't want to see post-game chat. So I, I think having the option there is fine. Although I think you should have the option to censor words or not censor words, depending on what you want. Like that's what most games do nowadays. Killers shouldn't be able to grab survivors during the unhook because it incentivizes camping, causes people to rage quit, and it's just really effing lame in general. I don't think this is a hot take. I think most people completely agree with this besides the killers that camp. Like I, I think that's totally fine. Okay, let's find a middle ground here though. I think healthy survivors shouldn't be able to be grabbed, but injured survivors should. How about that? Because either way, the injured survivor is going to go down anyway. So like, who cares? Blight is bad without his add-ons. He is a perfectly designed killer with just overpowered add-ons. No, <laughs> Blight is not a bad killer base kit. He is very, very good. His add-ons amplify him even more, but base kit, he is a very strong killer. Most of the hits that you see good Blights get are not, it doesn't have anything to do with his add-ons. So no, <laughs> this is just wrong. Dead by Daylight will die if licenses aren't more common. I do not agree with this whatsoever. I think if Dead by Daylight actually focused on making fun killers, it'll keep the current player base happy. I think if they want to grow, then yes, licenses need to be more common because it brings in new players. But I think if they want to retain the current player base that they already have, they need to stop putting out Skull Merchant and Knight and, you know, all of the recent killers that have been just so boring. I said it once and I'll say it again. Billy deserved his add-on check. Get, get out. Get, get get out. No. Pyramid Head should have bigger cake. This isn't a hot take. Roots of Dread was the best anniversary chapter? Bro. <laughs> You're telling me Roots of Dread was better than Pyramid Head's release. <laughs> that is so incorrect. Forced Penance is a good perk. It depends. I think, I don't think Forced Penance is a good perk purely because it's so, like, it, it's only good against survivors that are good and a majority of your matches are against bad survivors. So I don't think it's worth running. But if you know for a fact that you're going to be going against good survivors, like in a tournament or something, then yeah, I could see Force Penance being a good perk. Adrenaline should very much be nerfed, as in they replace the free health state with endurance, or if they give a bigger penalty for when endurance procs. I do not agree. I think Adrenaline is one of the best perks in the entire game, and I think it's perfectly designed. I don't think there's any reason that you should nerf it. It's a really fun perk. It rewards survivors for actually completing their objective. This entire perk design is rewarding you for doing well, and I think that most perks should be like that. They should remove indoor maps. I don't like indoor maps, but I disagree. I think it 
adds a ton of variety, and I think we need variety in this game. It helps stealth killers do better. Sometimes it's really fun for survivors because they can do different stealth builds, like the overcome lucky break bite the bullet build. I do not think they should remove indoor maps. The game is nowhere near as bad as a state people say it is. I feel like people are just looking for reasons to complain half the time, especially on Twitter. Well, DBD Twitter complains about literally everything to possibly exist on this planet. So yes, I'd have to agree with you there. However, I do think the game is in the worst state that it's ever been in. It's just, there's so many killers that are boring and there's so many play styles that are boring right now and they just keep releasing them. <laughs> like they just keep adding more. So all of the fun aspects of DBD are slowly becoming less and less common because there's more and more unfun stuff. I would have to agree and disagree. I don't think it's like the most awful, atrocious game ever. Like there's still a lot of fun stuff in this game, but it is, in my opinion, in one of the most boring states it's ever been in right now. Wesker is harder to master than Blight. That is really interesting. I do not know because I do not know the skill ceiling of Wesker, but I have seen some clips on Twitter about Wesker doing some insane things that I never even knew that you could do with him. So maybe like this is a possibility, but I do know that Blight's skill ceiling is so unbelievably high. Like if you see a competitive game with Blight as the killer on Larry's, you'll see how insane people are at Blight. So I don't know this, this like this, I could agree. I could disagree. I just don't know because I don't know the potential of Wesker. Decisive strike should go back to five seconds, but give exhaustion. That is a really, really interesting rework idea. I think DS should just go back to five seconds. Pig is B tier. No, I think she can be B tier, but I don't think she is B tier. Does that make sense? Bubba was a useless killer to be added to the game. I disagree wholeheartedly. I think every single killer has a place in this game. Some, you know, worse than others, but Bubba added so much to this game, like so much personality to this game. I think originally when he came out, yeah, he was kind of useless because why would you use him over Hillbilly? But now that he's gotten a rework, he plays very differently to Hillbilly. I think he's a great addition to this game. The Garden of Joy is a good map. Absolutely not. I think aesthetically, it's probably my favorite map in the game. I think it's a really, really cool looking map. And I do like a lot of the loops, actually. Like I have a good time in a lot of the loops, but it's just the size is just awful. And the main building is awful. If they reduce the size and made the main building like a little bit more fun to play around, if they turned it into like actual loops instead of the typical like indoor building loops, then I would have to agree with you. Cause I actually really like a lot of these sections of Garden of Joy, especially the parking lot loop. Cause it's just, there's so much you can do with it. But at the same time, it's like a new loop. You know what I mean? I mean, it's kind of like a typical jungle gym, but still it's, it's different. But yeah, I think it's just the size that makes it so bad. People who don't play both sides shouldn't have game balance opinions. I don't think that's a hot take. I think that's just like true. If you don't play both sides, like your opinion is invalid. <laughs> I mean, it's not invalid, but like it shouldn't be prioritized if you don't understand how the other side plays. But at the same time, like most people play Survivor, right? If they're not having fun, then the game goes downhill. So I think behavior does consider their opinions, but in general for like actual good players and people who like play the game constantly, I, I agree. I totally agree. Noed base kit. I honestly would not be against it, but at the same time, it kind of removes the fun factor from Noed where it's like a surprise, right? And it's kind of fun to determine whether or not you think the killer will have Noed because usually you can tell just by the way they play. Like if they camp and they tunnel, they usually have Noed or if they're like really bad or they have frosty eyes, they usually have Noed. So it's it's kind of a funny game that you can play to just guess if they have Noed. But I honestly, I wouldn't be against it. It would give survivors an extra objective to do if they want to get rid of Noed. So I don't know. It'd be interesting to test on like a PTB or something. DBD is a good game and the devs are underappreciated. They constantly listen to feedback and do their best to fix player concerns. People just need to understand that it is impossible to make everybody happy and they either have to enjoy the game for what it is or stop playing and complaining. I agree with like half of this. The devs are underappreciated. I totally agree with that. I think the devs put in a ton of work and they're like struggling to make updates to a game that's built on a terrible engine and just runs on spaghetti code. But listening to feedback is very hit or miss. Like there's some things that they do that makes absolutely zero sense. The hillbilly changes, for example. Why were they planning on nerfing the engravings? Nobody asked for that. Not a single person asked for that. It feels like behavior is purposely doing controversial changes to kill the game or alter it entirely enough to where the original player base won't play it anymore. I don't think this is correct. I think they're just realizing that it's been the same exact game for seven years in a row and they're just trying to switch it up. Sprint Burst has always been better than Dead Hard yet avoids the nerfs because it takes time to master. This is just objectively true in my opinion. I think Sprint Burst has always, always been the best exhaustion perk in the game. It just, it's so difficult to be able to use it properly that I don't think they care. I think you're completely right. I don't think they'll ever nerf Sprint Burst because of how difficult it is to actually use in a way that makes it good. DBD was better when it was 
was unbalanced and MMR didn't exist. I personally completely agree with this, which is a really hot take, but I, I, I do agree with this. I think it's more fun when there's just like crazy stuff happening every single game. Like you never know what to expect. It's so much variety. Demogorgon is overrated and a mediocre killer. That is a hot take. The reason everybody likes him is because he's fun to play as and fun to play against. Plus he is very strong. Like he can teleport wherever he wants and he has a decent like chase ability. I, d I don't think there's anything wrong with the demo. Like I literally can't think of anything wrong with demo besides some of his add-ons being kind of mid. The Borgo is one of the best looking maps. Now that is the hottest take on this list. <laughs> My hot take is camping, tunneling, slugging, hitting on hook, teabagging, etc. is all completely fine. There's no rules against it. It's part of the game and it doesn't make you a bad person for doing something in game. Yes, like this is just true. It may be boring. I completely think that most of this stuff is boring or cringe or whatever, but it doesn't make you a bad person if you do it. It's in the game. You're allowed to do it. I don't think you shouldn't be allowed to do it, but I'm not going to say that it doesn't make you cringe. <laughs> like you can do whatever you want. Personally, I don't do any of these things because I want the other party to have fun for the most part. So I, I just play normally. But if you do these things, like there's really not a problem with it. Let me know what your hot take is down in the comments below.